Hi everyone! So today I have a sunscreen video for you, so I figured I would come in costume. You know, fully committed to the look. Um, we'll have to see how long the uh, red glasses last though, because it's it really does make everything like rose-colored, so I can't really tell what color anything actually is. Yeah, so um, this is kind of perfect timing because I'm taking a little uh, midweek trip to Austin next week, and um, I really want to do some like fun outdoor things. So I uh, booked a pass to Barton Springs Pool, and um, I got a hotel that has like a really nice outdoor pool, um, and I might try to go hiking. Definitely want to walk around the city, so I will be needing a lot of sunscreens and I will need to be reapplying them and I will need water resistant for uh, a good portion of my trip so I figured it could be a great time to talk about the sunscreens I'm currently loving um, mention the sunscreens I probably will plan on bringing and then just discuss a few that maybe aren't necessarily working all that well for me um, so before we begin on the favorites let's just talk a little bit about sunscreen can't tell you the last time I've done like a, a full video um, on this topic it's a conversation we should always be having and Lola Guzman of the Hermes Hippie did a really good video about sunscreens that I'll link below. I mean, she kind of talks about, you know, even if you're someone who isn't necessarily concerned with hyperpigmentation or fine lines, like you're not really, it's not something that you're looking to address, you still have to consider the risk of, of skin cancer, you know? And I think especially now, there's so much pollution in the environment and our, our ozone layers really depleted. Um, even if it is becoming stronger, it's still weakened, right? Because of pollution. I think it's, we have like one less level of protection in the environment. So I've been personally thinking a lot about sunscreen because ever since I moved back to Houston, um, after being away from like the Texas sun, the notorious Texas sun, uh, for a few years, you kind of, I kind of forgot about just how intense it can be. Cause I think, you know, New York or even LA, even when it's sunny, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily feel hot. Whereas with Texas, like even in the winter when the sun is out, it feels hot. So I think it's more at the front of your mind because you associate heat with the sun. But then you also consider a place like New York where it maybe doesn't get as sunny as Texas, but you're outside a lot more, right? You're walking places, you're walking to the train, you're walking to work. You do have a lot of cumulative UV exposure. So, and if you work, you know, in the city and you work in a high rise, you're exposed to like the UVA that penetrates through the glass. So it is something to think about. I would say one of the best um, ways to shop sunscreen is to start by looking at brands who really specialize in sun care, whether that's a brand like Supergoop or Kula that devotes their entire range to just making sunscreen products um, in all different formats, or it's a brand like uh, La Roche-Posay, Clarins, Shiseido, um, Neutrogena that dedicates a huge section of their product range to sun protection. I think that's a really great way to go because, you know, these brands usually have more money or invest more money into sunscreen research and um, really getting the formulas right. And, you know, obviously there was the whole benzene contamination scare, but I think it's such a one-off instance and I think it doesn't, it doesn't dilute the fact that wearing sunscreen every day is still good for you. You know what I mean? I think there are a lot of different um, angles, but I think regardless, everyone can pretty much agree that you should wear sunscreen every single day and you should reapply when you can. Um, and you know, it's not just about sunscreen, it's about smart sun exposure. So avoiding the sun between the hours of 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., you know, wearing a hat, wearing sunglasses, um, wearing protective clothing when possible, sitting in the shade, all of those things are good practice. But if you are gonna be in direct sun exposure, um, and you are going to be active, sweating, swimming, etc. You need to apply your sunscreen, you need to reapply it, and you need to look for water resistant, um, quite tenacious formulas. The sunscreens that work for me may not work for you. I have normal to dry, dehydrated skin, so my skin can tend to take quite a bit of moisture. And you might have heard, you know, the old adage about sunscreen is like the best sunscreen is the one that you'll want to use. And that's kind of the, the thinking that I'm following, is I'm just trying to find the sunscreens that work well with my skin type, uh, my skin tone, my textural preferences. That doesn't sting my eyes or make my skin feel like it's on fire, you know? It's not a lot to ask, but I guess it is. Something I am also becoming more aware of and trying to pay more attention to is making sure that there's enough UVA protection. If you're using a zinc oxide based sunscreen, you're pretty much safe. But anyway, you need something that protects against both UVA and UVB. And a lot of sunscreens, especially American sunscreens, have really good UVB protection, but UVA is where they lack. And UVA is what causes the most long-term damage to your skin and can potentially cause 
uh, is increased risk for skin cancer. Like I said before, um, I'll link any helpful resources that I found uh, in the description box below and all of the products that I mentioned today will be linked below for you. Um, all right, so let's start. Um, the first is the La Roche-Posay Telerian. Telerian? My French is gonna be awful, I apologize in advance. Uh, this is the Double Repair Face Moisturizer UV with SPF 30. And this one I heard about through Leslie, the um, founder of Clur, um, and I love it. Even though technically I guess it is a moisturizer with sunscreen in it, I can use it the way I would use a sunscreen, which is quite heavy handed. I know that I'm getting the protection, but also not feel like oh my gosh, I just put, you know, six layers of moisturizer on my skin. You know what I mean? I believe um, I saw some silica kind of high up on the ingredients list, and I kind of do get a light kind of airy, slightly powdery finish with this. Feels very supple, feels moisturizing, um, kind of plumping, but it also feels like it absorbs, you know, and you don't have this like greasy residue left behind, which let me just say, I'm not against greasy residue. I just don't necessarily want that on my face when I'm gonna be putting makeup on top. Whereas this one, I can totally put makeup on top of it and makeup sits nicely. If you've heard positive reviews about this, let me just chime in and, and join them because this is really great. Um, next, ooh, another one of my favorite daily sunscreens is the Black Girl Sunscreen Face and Body SPF 30. Um, this one does is water resistant. Uh, it says up to 80 minutes. The thing I love about this is the texture and the finish. Kind of has this like gel cream, cat hair, um, has like a gel cream texture that absorbs beautifully. At first it looks like, oh, it's just gonna take forever to rub in, but it, as soon as you start massaging, it's, it's gone. It sinks in quickly, doesn't disturb my other products that I've layered underneath it, um, and I can put makeup on top of it, but I just love how like almost glossy the finish is. Very light scent, there's like a little um, carrot seed oil, some cocoa butter, some avocado oil, so it does have some moisture to it. So if you are on the um, oilier side, you might wanna find something maybe more mattifying, but normal to dry. I don't know if you can see the difference. This is the La Roche-Posay, just the face moisturizer, and this is the Black Girl sunscreen. Um, between the two, I would say the La Roche-Posay is a little bit more moisturizing feeling, but slightly more matte in finish, whereas this is more luminous finish, but a, a slightly lighter texture, so. Ooh, let's do a mineral one really quick. Um, the Dr. Sam's Flawless Gossamer Untinted. If you remember, I tried this on camera um, when it first launched and like I just couldn't massage it into my skin. It like pilled up and rolled right off my face. Um, and anyway, they fixed whatever issue there was and it's absolutely phenomenal now. Um, it is a mineral uh, SPF 50, it's zinc and titanium and I believe it's nano zinc and nano titanium. So you really get this like imperceivable finish on the skin. And I personally prefer this to their regular daily face sunscreen. I find that one to be a little bit thick and kind of buttery almost. And it can, I find it can be kind of hard to blend it into the skin, whereas I don't have issue with the gossamer at all. I put more on so you can actually see. I'm just like, I don't wanna waste it, it's so good. Okay, so. It definitely has a gossamer finish. Like the name feels very appropriate. Uh, it very much catches the light. Once you kind of let it absorb, it does kind of settle down a little bit. No shimmer, but um, just the finish itself is very shiny, I guess you could say. Um, but that's probably why you would use it. I mean, it's in the name gossamer, you know? Um, so I think if you have, you know, a drier skin like mine, I think you'll really love this because I do find some mineral sunscreens can tend to actually make me look a little bit dry or feel a little bit dry. Whereas this gives me enough moisture as well as mineral based protection um, and you know bless Dr. Sam's for uh, adequate six pumps for the face. I mean, they're not they, they're not telling you to just use a you know a pea sized amount, which I appreciate. Um, they do make a tinted version, but I personally don't find. And again, it's on my skin tone, which I do have kind of a lighter complexion. Um, I don't find that it leaves a white cast compared to some of the other mineral especially zinc oxide based ones that I've been testing to just like even out my complexion a little bit and to get that sun protection, I'll just use a little bit of the tint. And they make two ver two shades of the tint, the 01 and the 02. The 02 has a little bit more of a golden um, kind of tint. So again, very gossamer, very, I mean, you can see it's catching the light really there. 
I mean, it's it's beautiful. Those are the Dr. Sam's, really love those, and I'm so glad they fixed the issue because I wanted to like them, but I just could not get into the original version. It was so bad. Another mineral one that I want to mention is the Koa Tinted SPF 45. They do make an untinted, but I haven't tried that one yet. Um, and this one, again, the tint is just to offset the bluish white, uh, bluish grayish purplish cast of the zinc oxide. Um, this is 12% zinc. Oh, it is water resistant for 40 minutes. And I love this one because it's super fluid, but it's non-drying. I think, I don't think there's actually any alcohol in it, but it does manage to blend in beautifully. So you can see here. On my skin tone, the, the tint that they've added is really actually quite brightening. It kind of corrects any kind of yellowish, greenish sallowness that I can sometimes have in the morning, especially when I'm tired. So the tint in this, in this case does actually work well to kind of enliven my skin tone, but I think in general, it would just help to offset that zinc oxide cast, but absolutely beautiful. Not as shiny as the Dr. Sam's, but it does have like a slightly luminous finish and definitely feels very light. Um, and again, easy to build. That's a big one for me because, you know, if you feel like, oh, I missed a spot or, oh, I could apply a little bit more on like my cheeks or my forehead, for example, sometimes you go to put more on and like the sunscreen just starts to roll right off. Think normal to combination uh, dry skin if you use it on top of a moisturizer. If you are oily, this might actually be enough moisture for you if you're really, really oily, but really good, really like that one. And then let's talk about some newer ones that I got. So this, which I picked up on eBay um, uh, per recommendation from my friend Devin, Dev's Day on Instagram, who, um, this is the European version of the La Roche-Posay Anthelios Invisible Fluid. And the reason I got this is because it has a really great UVA protection, which as I mentioned before, in the US, the filters that can be used that protect against UVA rays are few and far in between and they're kind of antiquated. Whereas um, Europe and Asia allows more ingredients to be used um, that have, I think, more robust UVA protection, protect against broader spectrum. It is one of those really super fluid, very thin, like I'm not even gonna squeeze this and it's gonna start dripping. So it's the kind of very invisible, easy to apply, easy to build up kind of sunscreens. To me, this is like the perfect city sunscreen. You know, you think about the city, everything's amplified because there's the concrete and the metal and the sun is reflecting off of glass. Extra UVA protection, definitely the way to go. Let's continue on. Um, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite sunscreens over the years has been the Super Goop Play Everyday Lotion. Um, I think this is like their classic kind of sunscreen formula. Um, what I love about this is how sweat and water resistant this is. Um, it's the kind of thing that really in my, gives me peace of mind because I just know that if I start to sweat, all of it's not gonna just run off right into my eyes, that it's gonna do a pretty good job of holding up until I can reapply. Um, same thing for swimming and just being outdoors in general. And I personally prefer lotions or gel consistencies when it comes to body sunscreen because I just feel like I mean, it's easier for me to see if there's any streaks or areas that need more coverage. Whereas with the sprays, and I have been using the Bare Republic Clear Screen, which I also really like. The sprays are clear, so it is harder to see like what sweat and what sunscreen, you know what I mean? Whereas with a white lotion, it's a little easier to tell. Um, and by the way, this one is beautiful on like arms and legs or any areas where you wanna be really glossy and have like a, a sheen to your skin. But for the body, it's like, it's not my, my ideal. Again, I would just rather go with the lotions or like the other one that I love for active wear and active use is the Shiseido Sun Protector Lotion. I've always loved Shiseido sunscreens. I just think they're, the textures are always nice. They always give you really dependable coverage. I've never gotten a sunburn with a Shiseido sunscreen. And the good news is they finally made a version that's clear. Some of you all might remember a few years ago where this, you know, the ultimate sun protection lotion was just like, a white paste pretty much, whereas uh, it's pure chemical filters now. They used to have like wet force and then they had heat force and then they combined them into synchro shield. And the thought is that it's either like a polymer or a, when it comes in contact with heat and or moisture, it strengthens like the matrix and, and actually makes it stick to the skin a little bit better. And in experience, like this is my go-to for like mowing the lawn and I know I just need something that's gonna be really dependable. I know I'm gonna sweat and I don't wanna have sweat and sunscreen running into my eyes. Whereas when I use this, I just feel the sweat beating up and rolling right off my skin or evaporating. 
no issues whatsoever. Yeah, so I'm, I'm almost done with this. And to be honest, I bought this last summer, so I, I'm not sure how much longer it has in terms of shelf life. Um, so I'll probably just leave this one here. When I go to Austin, I'm, I'm gonna be taking this one, I think, because it's large enough to use for face and body. It's a nice 50 protection, sweat and water resistant, high UVA protection. Other sunscreen I've been testing that I absolutely love. First of all, I was sold on the branding. I don't know if any of y'all have seen the Vacation brand yet, but it's sort of like 1985 Reborn. They fully committed to the aesthetic. Like they ship like, a, I'll have to put a picture, but they ship you a complimentary scratch off worth $0 for like a metal detector competition. So I was like, well, hopefully the sunscreen is good, right? Cause I would hate for it to be all branding and no substance. And fortunately, the texture is beautiful. Actually, it's the sunscreen I have on today. It's like a classic kind of creamy lotion. Really gives you like a nice amount of moisture. Very easy to blend. They say that their signature scent is like a blend of coconut, banana, and like chlorine pool water. And I definitely get that vibe. It is like coconut banana with like a little bit of pool water. I get the pool water. I, anyway, but yeah, so far so good. It's 20 bucks for 3.4 ounces of sunscreen. The branding's on point. The texture's really nice. The finish is really nice. Um, hasn't stung my eyes yet. Uh, you know, the only, the only thing I'll say is you do run the risk with a, a new brand like this that they haven't done like third party testing to see if the sun protection labeled is actually the sun protection you get. You just have to trust that it's gonna be effective, um, which again is why I say good to go with like your super goops, your La Roche Posay's, your Shiseido's, if you're just uncertain, but so far so good. Made They've managed to make sunscreen really fun, um, which I think super goop has also done, but. To me, Supergoop has like a slightly more serious vibe, whereas they are fully in, like they know that they're campy and you know, which I just, I don't know, I appreciate. The other product I will be bringing is the Neutrogena Invisible Daily Defense Face Mist. And this is fantastic for reapplication. Um, just be sure not to spray it directly on your face. You wanna spray it in your palms first and then press it into your skin. Um, because if you spray this on your face, it will get in your eyes, it will sting, it will burn. But this is what I love to reapply on like my ears, back of my neck and my neck um, and my face um, because it's just so easy. There's a lot of alcohol in it, which evaporates pretty quickly. So I feel like the finish is quite invisible, but I also love this for like, oh my gosh, I'm about to get in the car. I forgot to put on sunscreen. I just need a little something on like the back of my arms the back of my hands, just so I know I have some protection on. Um, and they make another version that is just, I think in their regular sunscreen packaging, but um, this is the one I've been trying and liking. I did have some questions on the Audacite uh, Sun Guardian SPF 30. And I'll be honest, the first time I tried it, it was nice. It looked pretty invisible. It did have a slight white cast, but did eventually go away. And then I tried it earlier today and it had such a, weird, dry, sticky, thick, white cast effect on my face that I had to wash it off. Um, I don't know if it's that I just didn't use like an emollient enough base underneath it to help it slip, but um, yeah, I, to be honest, the jury's still out. I need to probably play with it a little bit more. I really wanna like it, cause I think, yeah, like, I mean, yeah, that's just, yeah. So I don't know, I still need to play with it. Unfortunately, I don't have like a full review for you or to, I can't really recommend it just yet. I think there may be other mineral sunscreens I like a little bit more, but I'll definitely keep using it and let you know. I'm hopeful, but I'm also gonna be realistic, you know? Um, and then the one sunscreen that I feel like has not worked out for me has been the Versed Guards Up, 15.2% uh, zinc oxide. For me, it's the texture of this. It just feels so thick and occlusive, like it's suffocating my skin almost. Especially once you, when you start to massage it in, it becomes thicker and like harder to blend. And it just starts to become really, I don't know how to describe it. It's like it sticks to my hands and it, but it also sticks to my skin and it just becomes very, yeah, occlusive. Like it's just clinging, you know, it's not blending in. Um, and then once it's, 
blended in starts to feel really heavy and like I've got, I just have like a layer of sunscreen on my face. Which when there are sunscreens that don't feel like that, it's kind of hard to justify continuing to use the ones that do. To be honest, like if this is my only sunscreen, I wouldn't want to use it because I don't like the texture of it, you know? And that's exactly what we want to avoid. So, and that's why I'm happy to keep testing sunscreens. But yeah, I think that's everything for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful um, and hopefully you found some sunscreens that maybe have piqued your interest. Um, if there's any that I need to try, please let me know below. I don't know, I'm feeling very energized by all the sunscreen chat lately. I just, it's been fun to try all these different formulas. So um, yeah, so I will be sure to link everything below for you. If you have any questions, please uh, feel free to leave them in a comment. And until my next video, I will talk to you very soon. Bye.